We've worked together on lots of things before the venue, so we've kind of always worked together well. But one thing that you told us was you have got to find your lane. You stay in your lane. This is my job. That's your job. And that has helped a lot. And so it's been helpful to say, you know, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And that's what you're going to do. And I'm not going to worry about that. And you're not going to worry about this. And it comes with skin in the game. Nobody's an employee. We're all partners in this. And we all um, sometimes work for nothing. And sometimes uh, we get paid, you know, so. Welcome to the Venue RX. On this show, we document and share best practices around owning, operating, and managing world-class wedding venues. Well, what is up, everyone? Welcome to the Venue RX. This is a special show for me. I'm I'm excited about this one because we get to talk to a uh, few folks here who are out in Texas who are starting a venue, and we've been working with them for a little bit. And I could not be more excited to welcome Chris Ann and Fawn to the Venue RX. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Well, I'm excited to jump into your story. It's super neat. I love how you guys are doing this as a family. <clears throat> you know, you're jumping in the deep end and, you know, let's go back though. I'd love to know, like, where did the dream of owning a wedding venue, starting a wedding venue, where'd that start? Yeah, I'll let you take it away. Well, or I guess I can kind of start. So um, I got engaged in 2020 and it was still kind of COVID times a little bit. And, um, I, well, first of all, I always wanted a quick engagement and a lot of venues are booked out, you know, over a year. And I, I wanted to pick my own date. I wanted to get married in a few months. And with it being COVID times, um, there was a lot of restrictions and everything. And I just didn't want to deal with any of that. And so it was also kind of my dream always to get married at my parents' house, which is now our venue. And then you can take it away from there. Yeah. So, um, We've just been a family business all our life. We have a number of family businesses, and uh, we've always invested in our property. We have a farm-to-table business. Um, the kids grew up going to farmer's markets and that sort of thing and hosting um, farm tours, and, and it's, it's, it's been something that the kids have grown up doing. And I've been in sales all my life. I, uh, um, f- I'm a financial advisor, so I'm, I'm uh, an investor at heart. And so I knew that um, weddings are expensive and uh, we have four children. And I thought, well, um, everybody kind of fell into place that we could improve our own property and and, uh, have something for the other kids, maybe if they decide that they want to get married here. And I always thought that we we kind of talked about and joked around about having a wedding venue. And so now that... um, Chris Ann uh, has moved back, joined the business. Uh, she's uh, joined an existing business with me as a uh, financial advisor, and then she started um, a business with my wife as a, a candle business, a uh, little light candle company. And so they host candle pouring classes out here. So it all kind of worked out really well together. And then, yeah. uh, so my son's now getting married, and uh, William uh, is our second oldest, and. Uh, He's joined the family business, and uh, so we're going to have our our second um, personal wedding here. And uh, so it, it just all kind of uh, fell in place, and it gave them opportunities, and and uh, gave Janet and I the opportunity to work with our kids and and um, spend time with our kids. You know, yeah. So that, that's super cool. I want to come back to that, but before we do, just tell me a little bit about the venue. You know, where is it located? Um, you know, if if you could you know, kind of describe it in terms of how it looks if we were there, you know, for the folks on the podcast, just kind of love to hear that. And then I want to go dig back into your story because you seem like quite an entrepreneurial family just in general. So, uh, but yeah, what does the the venue look like? So, well, we're about 30 minutes west of San Antonio. um, So not too far. And it's, it's kind of like that garden wedding feel to me or like more fairy tale whimsical. It's just, it's beautiful. We've got um, fields and we've got longhorns that come up to the field closest to where the wedding site is. And after my wedding, everyone is raving about how cool the longhorns were, which is it's normal for us. But I think when people aren't around cattle or they're from the city, like they don't see that ever. And so and longhorns are just so beautiful. So 
got longhorns, trees everywhere. Um, it's all outdoor. We've got the bridal suite indoors um, in the estate house. But then you walk out the front door and the ceremony site is right there. And then we've got this big white open air tent. Um, it's just very dreamy. I don't know. I feel like dreamy is a good word to describe it. But yeah, natural greenery. And it's in we're on what? About seven, about 70 acres. Yeah. And it's all, um, there's brush land around us. So it's very private. You're not, you don't see a lot of, um, buildings or hear a bunch of traffic or anything. So it's kind of our own little private oasis out here. Yeah. It's got, we get a lot of comments. People drive in and you can't really see it from the road and then it opens up. It's yeah. got a windy road that comes in and the tent is, um, oh, probably almost uh, 20 foot tall and, uh, white it's very clean the house and and everything's just really uh, clean and modern and new yeah. we've taken good care of thanks yeah that's that's incredible so christian you said that it's it's about half hour uh west yeah of uh, san antonio? Half, to, half hour west of san antonio um and kind of going back to the candle bar which is a part of the venue um, whenever we decided to open the candle bar, do candle classes with our candle company, I was a little nervous. I think, are people going to drive out from San Antonio? We're not in the city. There's a lot to do in the city, but we've had really good success with it. And a lot of people coming out from the city say, well, we wanted to get out, you know, and it's a pretty drive. There's farmland. And so we're close enough that it's not a crazy drive for people, but far enough to where you're getting out of the city. There's farmland. It's just kind of relaxing out here. Yeah, we've actually had some people drive from Austin too. Yes, yeah. to come pour a candle. Yeah, the right. destination kind of something yeah. to do for the day. I think it's different for people. I want to. I want to jump back to that really quick, and I'm glad you kind of brought it back to the candles. Little Light Candle Company. How did that start? And you know what? What is what is that? Well, we. Um, it also kind of ties back into the farm to table business that we have. All of our businesses, I feel like, kind of tie in together somehow. But um, we got started, my brother and sister wanted to do like a science project when they were back in school, it was probably eight, 10 years ago. And they wanted to um, make candles for a school project. And so in their research and doing that, they found out that a lot of candles could be really toxic to you. Um, and so we just started making our, we love candles. So we started making our own clean candles, natural ingredients for ourselves, and then kind of started selling it with the farm um, and then after I graduated college, I went to my mom and I was like, why don't we turn this into an actual business? And so, yeah, that's how they kind of, that came about and it's steadily grown over the last four or five years. Um, but we always dreamed of having our own space. We started doing candle classes where we would travel for them. We kind of always thought about having our own space, what a dream that would be to host candle classes in studio. And so, um, as the wedding venue, as that was kind of being talked about, we were kind of thinking about that. We thought, well, we could double this, do the candle bar, and it could also be part of a venue space and an entertaining space that we could rent out. And so it all just kind of fell into place and all kind of goes together. That's so cool. That's so cool. I mean, we um, Before we really announced that we were going to do a wedding venue, we had already opened the candle bar for classes. And so people were coming out. And one thing that kind of reassured reassured us was, People would say, wow, do y'all do weddings out here? And we hadn't even told anyone that we were going to do a wedding venue at that point. And so I was like, okay, people can see this, you know, like we're on the right track here. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I, lo- I love that. So you guys, father, daughter, you know, duo here, but there's, you know, Fawn, I know your, your wife is involved. I know you mentioned William's getting married on the property. Are there other family members involved as well? Yeah, kind of all of us. My husband is involved with us. And then my brother and sister, um, they're both in college, but the degree, the routes they're taking with their degrees wrap in with what we're doing on certain things so they can help out a lot. So it's, we're all really pretty involved. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jonathan, you've helped us find our lane. Yeah. And so and we'll probably talk about that a little later, but um, yeah, the college kids, uh, the twins, they can work remotely um, at college. It gives them an opportunity to to make a little money. Um, and then all of these businesses seem to start out as side hustles, and then they've grown into, uh, you know, 
established businesses. So yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I know Chris Ann has like three main hustles now. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 awesome. It's awesome. That's that's so cool. I love how you've kept everything inside the family. You've you know, like you said, provide some opportunities, but it's also you know, enhancing your property, you know, it's enhancing, you know, the stuff that you have there. I was going to ask, you know, kind of some of my typical questions on how you financed it, but I know, you know, it was your, your property prior yeah. when, um, you know, kind of constructing the business and, and building kind of the business side of things, what were some of the steps that you took kind of leading up to saying, Hey, we're actually going to be open. Well, I guess it kind of goes back to my wedding whenever we decided to purchase the tent. Um, we, it's something we could have rented, honestly, to rent, it was pretty expensive. And at that time we were sort of thinking this could be a wedding venue down the road, but that was like very early stages of even thinking about it. And so with the farm, we bought this tent and it was semi-permanent, something we could take down, something we could maybe rent out to other people or something that y'all could use on the farm as a permanent structure if we needed it. And so it was a financial commitment, but something that could go like several different ways. So even if we didn't do the wedding venue, it wasn't going to be like this huge loss, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. We've always kind of uh, tried to have it, um, have a backup plan. If we decide not to do something or um, it doesn't work out. Um, so yeah, the, the property, uh, since we are an operational farm and a ranch, uh, kind of go like a lot of others um it it naturally turns into an estate uh venue destination wedding whatever you want to call it um so yeah the tent we were like oh we can always store hay or equipment under tractors yeah. under it you know it's yeah if it doesn't work out so uh yeah it's kind of funny because people would say i uh, so you purchase this tent like you know you can rent these things but <laughs> um but yeah it was uh with everything, um, there's risks involved, but yeah. totally. I mean, but it's a pretty substantial tent, and Chris, and like you were saying, it's uh, it's expensive. I mean, those tents can can get really pricey, even just to rent. Do you kind of remember at the time the cost of renting versus buying? Yeah, it's um, it was a probably uh, somewhere around forty thousand, and um, there again, buy right. To, yeah. to purchase it and um, to rent it would be somewhere around 8,000 probably. And we couldn't really vision it um, or, you know, we were kind of unsure about what's this tent going to look like. They're going to throw it up a few days before the wedding. Um, yeah. So it was, and, and again, it came from uh, the Midwest and uh, there were shipping costs involved. And so me and my two boys um, made a road trip with um our truck and trailer and haul this thing back and uh actually got pulled over because we had farm plates on and they're like oh, what are you hauling here and we were like um it's a hay barn which yeah it, it was going to be a hay barn too so, <laughs> um and the the highway patrol was really uh kind of comical and laugh because here's uh, a dad and two farm boys hauling this uh tent on a trailer you know so yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. That's a good story. Yeah. You know, I I was just thinking about it because I've obviously seen pictures and, you know, I encourage everyone, you know, whether you're listening or watching on YouTube, check out the pictures, um, you know, on the website, the Instagram. Chris Ann, you've been doing a great job on the Instagram, posting reels and, and some beautiful pictures. But I mean, it's not like you think tent, it's not a, it's like a pavilion. It's a big, you know, uh, space. And so it's really neat. And, you know, here, I know in the California market, a couple of the markets, you know, to, even to rent tents, I mean, 8,000 is kind of sort of on the inexpensive side. You know, we've seen, we got a quote, there's been a lot of rain here. We got a quote last week for $24,000 for a tent. Yeah. You know? I think the cost has gone up in the last yeah. few years, um, obviously, but at the time that was, uh, that's, it's probably a lot more expensive to purchase and rent now. That would be, yeah. When, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Tell me, so now as you're kind of starting to get into it, you're you're saying, okay, you know, it seems like you got in, you kind of dipped your your big toe in a little bit. And you said, okay, you know, Fawn, you said, got 
at least, you know, one daughter's wedding is going to be here. We, you know, this is going to be a great idea. We could also repurpose it as a hay barn if this doesn't work out. Now the idea is kind of starting to take shape a little bit more. Um, what are, what were some of the things like, did you do research prior to kind of look at venues in the area? Were you aware of other venues in the area? What other steps did you take to kind of start moving the ball along? Yeah, I feel like we're a little bit unique in the way that we are fully outdoor. There's a lot of venues in the area that have like a closed in, uh, reception space. Um, there are some venues, I have probably like an hour to an hour and a half away from here that is similar to ours, totally open air. So, but they're closer to the big cities where we're not. So we um, kind of looked into those types of venues and yeah, I mean, it hasn't been easy doing the market research, but I feel like we've got a feel for what other venues charge and what we charge, what, what do they have that we don't, that we can't charge for or vice versa, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't think Chris Ann really saw a, another venue within an hour that you were in love with, really. No, because whenever I got married, that was one thing. I initially was like, I want to get married here if we can make it work. Um, but then they said, don't feel pressure to get married here. If you want to go look at other things, we can do that. But I just wasn't interested. In, I mean, I had a very specific vision for our wedding. And I feel like people like me, that's kind of the target market. I yeah. wanted the outdoor, dreamy, um, free, I don't know, that kind of wedding. I didn't. I wasn't looking for like a, a fancy hotel uh, conference, you know, ballroom All style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you didn't want the real ranch. Either. Yeah, I didn't want um, the real rustic look. I kind of wanted the classy, airy, still outdoors, but not too rustic. I just had this vision for it and nothing around here really um, was it for me. And so, That's yeah. Cute. I, yeah. I, I love that because you kind of, you were just in that place where you were getting married. You were looking for a space and you matched the property. It happened to be your property, which is, which is yeah. great. <laughs> But now, you know, I definitely think that that is something like as people are looking for venues in the area, this is a great opportunity for you to stand out, right? To kind of be be that in your DNA. Um, and so I love that. That's that's incredible. So I'm I'm curious, as you were going along this process of, you know, looking at the property, you know, building the property, getting that tent on the property, you also have other buildings that you were working on to kind of trim out for event specific purposes. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, so um, probably the biggest investment um, that we've done since Chris Ann's wedding, we didn't really have public bathrooms. I mean, we had our house, uh, which we had what we 250, 250 people. people on our wedding, so that was going to be a lot, and we didn't want yeah. Uh, I mean, we just didn't want people coming to our house to use the bathroom, you know. So we rented one of those luxury potty on a trailer thing that's really nice, and it and it served its purpose. It definitely worked. Now, like being a venue, that would not work. But for my own wedding at our own house at the time, totally worked. Yeah, because it was kind of a DIY kind of um, yeah. when we did our own, um, and and uh, so we did make the investment and put in. Um, Women's and men's bathroom, three stalls, um, urinals, and air conditioning. It made it really nice. So that was that was a, an investment that we've made, um, as well as the the bar itself, candle bar. So the candle bar is actually there. I brought. I mean, if you look at the concrete in there, it's all stained up from all the projects they did growing up. It's kind of cool though. I feel like it. I don't know. I like it that way. But um, we, it was just a total barn. And so whenever we were talking about starting a candle bar and doing the wedding venue kind of all at the same time, um, we decided to close that in, ship lap it. We've got these roll up doors on either side. It's kind of like the, kind of like garage doors that are glass, you know, and a bar. So you can roll that up and use that as the bar. So all of that, oh my gosh, if you could see the before and after pictures, it's just crazy. Yeah. But that was definitely an investment. Yeah. It used to be, um, welders and air hoses and stuff and now we have chandeliers hanging yeah from chandelier in there but still the same flooring it's a little cleaner than it used to be yeah 
That's so neat. <clears throat> you know, Chris, and just something how how you said that just now sparked something in in my mind. I wanted to ask this question, and this is um, this is something that I've even seen. You know, as we've worked with you and your family, I notice a a real like you guys work with each other really easily. You know, it seems like you know, there's definitely been some pressure situations. I know you're juggling a lot, Fawn. You've got a number of things going on, but you're working with a family. And, you know, there are plenty of business people out there that say, never work with family. You don't want to work with family. It gets too complicated. It gets too difficult. You know, and I don't, I don't get that vibe from you on, on, you know, obviously this podcast here, um, yeah. which is a good thing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, even just from working with you, I've noticed there's an ease of working in your family that that I know kind of is maybe counterintuitive and countercultural in terms of kind of what other business people would say is is a smart move. What's a, a hack or what's kind of some some of the secret to successfully working together as a family? I well, whenever we started working with you and you said, I mean, we've we've worked together on lots of things before the venue, so we've kind of always worked together well, but one thing that you told us was you have got to find your lane. You stay in your lane. This is my job. That's your job. And that has helped a lot. Um, Cause I feel like, well, especially us too, I feel like can think we can do it all and be, you know? Um, and so it's been helpful to say, you know, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And that's what you're going to do. And I'm not going to worry about that. And you're not going to worry about this. Yeah. That's helped a lot. But I think that we're, none of us get our feelings hurt easily. We're, um, not easily offended. And so I think it's easy for us to say, hey, I don't like the way this is going or we should do this instead. And we just have open communication. We're honest we, yeah. and respectful. I mean. Yeah, I think that open communication is is huge. Yeah. And, and I think it starts early on from when the kids are little. You know, uh, everybody respects everybody. Everybody, um, open communication. We talk things out. We don't hold things in. We don't get our feelings. I mean, you might get your feelings hurt, but you. Um, I think we've all done a really good job of um, putting ourselves in the other person's shoes and um, and plead your case. You know, Christine gets a little overwhelmed sometimes because she's our uh, administrative, you know, guru, and uh, and we've done um, some things in the past. And we said, okay, so this is too much. I know you think you can do it. Let's, yeah. let's pass that on to Caroline. And then we'll ask Caroline, we give her the opportunity. And, yeah. and it comes with, um, uh, I guess, um, skin in the game. I mean, we all, um, uh, nobody's an employee. We're all, we're all partners um, in this. And we all um, uh, sometimes work for nothing. And sometimes uh, we get paid, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I I want to press in just I'll ask one more question. We'll go on to something different. But uh, again, kind of I know with a lot of families, there's maybe maybe hurt feelings or, you know, maybe personalities don't get along together or something like that. Or maybe, you know, kids. I've, I've seen this in my own family and I know this is going to resonate with the audience. You know, you you grow up with your parents and you're kind of like, ugh, like. They have their way of doing things. I've got my way of doing things. I'm going to go off to college, you know, kind of screw them. Like, I'm going to do my thing. And a little bit of that independence, almost rebellion of, like, wanting to go do that. And, again, kind of, Chris, and that's not what I hear. I hear you really appreciating the fact that there was, you know, kind of some family history in those floors, right? Yeah. And and some of that. So, did was there ever that period for you guys or for any of the kids or – is that something that that you kind of just moved through? Um, and, and I'm curious, Chris, on your side of it, but then also Fawn on your side, because I mean, you're you're the dad, like you're kind of yeah. yeah. like the grace, the the precedent here. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, I mean, growing up, every, everyone goes through like a like you said, like us. They don't know what they're talking about, you know, or whatever. As a younger kid, but um, he, so both sides of my parents. Both sides of my grandparents are also entrepreneurs. And so though and we all get along and I've always just kind of looked up to all of them. They've all been successful in what they do. And so I feel like I've always just kind of listened to y'all for the most part and understood. Um, but my younger siblings may be a little bit different. Uh, we all get along, but uh yeah. 
they're well they're also like 20 right now and so they're kind of in that stage of like you know i know better than you on certain things or whatever yeah yeah as I mean, um going back uh, so my dad was self-employed and my brother and i um and my sister but uh, my sister um, went on and did her thing but still was very involved in the family and then uh, my dad uh was a farmer rancher but a uh, um, uh, uh, tax accountant so we got a glimpse of how other businesses run whether it's a hardware store or if the guy's a plumber and that sort of thing and so my brother is um we both worked in the business um, together we're totally different get along very well together um so my dad was always um, kind of, I guess, my coach. And I always keep keep in mind, I tell people all the time, when I became a teenager, my dad all of a sudden one day became very dumb. And and as I went through my teenage years, he got dumber and dumber. Yeah. And then once I hit 20, uh, he started to go back to being a smarter guy. And all the way up to his 80s, um, he was still surprised me how smart he yeah. got every year after that. So, <laughs> um, and I think we all go through that. And as parents, you have to be patient because uh, yeah. most most of us, when we're younger, have to go through that. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. You know, my dad. There was about a year that my dad. No, it was about two years maybe that my dad had all teenagers in the house all at the same time, and he was like, I think he. T- I remember him telling me. It was like when I was 18 and then my sister had just turned 13 and it was like, this is about to be the worst two years of my life. I think <laughs> yeah. as he said, it's going to be all, all hidden all at once. But um, yeah. that's, that's really cool. That's, that's a, a neat reflection. And, you know, you said with the generational entrepreneurship that you've seen so often people, and I know I struggle with this as well, you're doing so much. You've got the kids there. Fawn, this is more directed towards you. How did you juggle the pressures of raising a family, having your own you know, business and needing to provide for your family and yeah. also still kind of not building resentment in the kids because they always saw kind of work as the thing that took the priority and it, and, and because you are an entrepreneur, you're taking work home. I mean, it's inevitable, right? Yeah. So how, how did you kind of keep those two things separate in a way that still made you know, Chris and the rest of the family feel like they weren't uh, less of a priority than work. Right. I think that, um, you know, Jana was a school teacher and I was, um, a corporate sales guy. And when Chris Ann, when, when Jana became pregnant with Chris Ann, I was on the road. And, and so I did spend a lot of time on the road and I wanted to be the dad that spent time with my kids. I wanted to coach the little league and that sort of thing. And I saw my dad do that. Um, even though he worked um, odd hours, you know, he was it, back then. The, um, his phone, the landline, would ring at the time, but um, he managed to juggle it. And I was like, you know, I can, I can do this, and I want to, I want to do that. And if I'm self-employed, I don't have to worry about having two weeks off and how I'm going to use those. So, um, so we lived on Janice teaching salary while I got my business established. And it was a, it was a huge sacrifice. I mean, we uh, had to live on beans and rice, you know? And so once, um, one year into it, I was making what she was making and she wanted to stay home with the sand. So, um, she, she's always been a, a business partner of mine. Um, and, um, so even though that owning your own business is very demanding and, uh, but, Sure. If you're uh, Warren Buffett always says, if you find what you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. And, and I feel, feel that way. Um, so I very rarely did I miss uh, any of the kids activities. Um, sure. Did my business um, uh, suffer a little bit? I, I, yeah, sure. I could have made a little more money at the office if I would have stayed at the office, but um, being a financial advisor, I see a lot of people with um, very successful but um, fail in their family life. And then I see people that are not so financially successful, but um, but financially independent and um, very wealthy with, with their family lives. So um, I, I took off from vacation with the family one time. I had a client tell me, I said, I said you know, um, it's probably not the most prudent thing to do, but I wanted to go on vacation with the family. And the, and the client told me, he said, Vaughn, you're investing in your family. And I never have forgot that because 
um, even though the financial commitment and pulling away from work, um, um, and I think that holds true with us working together because we have invested in our family with time. Yeah. yeah. So that's, and that's a great way to kind of bring it back around to the venue. Thank you for sharing that. I, re- I really appreciate it. So many of <clears throat> the venue owners that we talk to, it is a family business. You know, it is, it's, it's a husband and wife couple. It's a mother, daughter, father, son, father, daughter, right? Like it's, it's, yeah. it's a family environment. And I know it gets, stressful because there can be those things that are personal things that bleed into work and and vice versa so uh really neat to hear your your reflections on that thanks so i'm i'm curious let's talk kind of about some of the marketing stuff kind of some of the nuts and bolts of how you guys are are getting out there and growing you're pretty early on in the stage correct yes right before yeah right before we got on we were celebrating can you tell us a little bit about why uh, yeah. Kind of where you're at, how many bookings you have, and then you know where you're headed. So we just got our second booking this week, so we're excited about that. Um, it's really our fourth because yeah, well, I guess two of them are our own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Have some kids, get some business. I like it. <laughs> are they paying full price? Of Hello, we just have a, a, our own events. Yep. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, we're just working on the website. I'm. We've got the website. I'm super close to finishing the new website that I think is going to look a lot better. And you've helped with that. Big help. Um, and honestly, I look at on Instagram at other new wedding venues because right now, like all I have to post content wise is my wedding. And it's like, how many times can I post my own wedding? You know, it's just, um, so sometimes I struggle with content a little bit. Now William's getting married here in about a month. That'll give us some more content. But one thing I do is I just find other brand new wedding venues on Instagram like us and see what are they posting? How are they coming up with content? And that helps. But yeah, we're just, um, I mean, just brand new. But I do feel like we've had a good amount of interest. So. Yeah. Well, you, you've been adding some of the construction that we've had uh, going on. Mm-hmm. You know, we're finding B-roll wherever we can. Yeah. With, and with your help. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, you're doing such a great job. I mean, we, you know, we, we've given some sparks of inspiration, but Chris and me, I see your reels pop up on, on my feed and, you know, I, I like them and I comment on them because they're, they're great. You know, like you're doing a great job putting them together. So, so kudos on that. Thanks. So four or two, you know, depending <laughs> yeah. on how you look at it. Um, I also know recently, Chris Ann, you are, you are, you know, famous. You're on a, on a billboard. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just had our billboard go up. So there's a billboard on their property. Um, and about half of it was open. And so we called and got it. It just went up a couple days ago. Yeah. So it's just a picture of my wedding, me and all my bridesmaids. We all look, you know, we have our bouquets and we're really excited. Um, so yeah, I sent pictures to all my bridesmaids and they're like, oh my gosh, you're seeing it. <laughs> That's awesome. You're going to drive by and see myself on a billboard, but yeah, I think that will help. Because um, we're on a pretty busy highway. It's gotten a lot busier. And so I think that will, you know, get some interest generated or at least show people there's a new venue in the area. Totally. And technically you're in Hondo, correct? Yeah, yeah we're yeah. in Hondo. That's kind of locally. That's fairly well known. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like used to, you'd tell someone in San Antonio, oh, we're from Hondo, and they had no idea where that was. But now San Antonio is spreading out so much and coming out this area. I feel like a lot of people know Hondo now. Yeah. We're, we're known for our sign um, coming in both sides of town. It says, uh, uh, welcome to Hondo. Uh, this is God's country. Please don't drive through it like hell. Yeah. People all just say, "Oh, there's a that's the town of that one sign." I'm saying, "Yeah, that's neat. That's awesome. Very cool. Very cool." Um, so, as you build the business, what are your kind of hopes, dreams, aspirations? Like, is this something you're looking to do? 10, 15 weddings a year? Are you looking to do fifty, sixty events a year? Like, where are you kind of at in terms of um, what what you want to do in terms of the business? We've kind of talked about that. I think right now. Um, we're, we don't want to overwhelm. I mean, right now we don't have all these bookings, but I don't think we ever want to overwhelm ourselves where it's like, we're doing a Friday, Saturday wedding every single weekend or anything like that. 
But I mean, as many bookings as we can get is great too. So yeah, as long as everybody's got time and work, and, yeah, uh, we're just set the bar real low or just baby steps learning learning as we go but uh we'll see where it takes us yeah that's awesome yeah i know for sure you uh you've got a beautiful space and i think you really have the the makings and the beginnings and you're going along a process that that successful venues go on and you know i've i've seen it a couple of times not only with the venues that we've started and helped run but you know in other venues that we talked to and and venue owners so i'm really excited for you guys and um, this has been really neat. Like, thank you for sharing your journey so far and kind of everything that's gone into it and a little bit of kind of the behind the scenes of the family dynamics. Really, really appreciate that. Well, thanks for having us. We were yeah. excited. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and you've been so helpful. Jana was, uh, uh, was one that originally found you and, and we watched your videos kind of like we were talking. We felt like we knew you before we even talked to yeah. you. And then, uh, I, I called your phone number and, uh, you you returned my call. I was like, wow, I got a celebrity that's actually I know. wants to visit with it. Uh, but, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, but you've been you've been a blessing to it, Jonathan, yeah. and and uh, we love working with your family and your team. You, yeah. You've done uh, done a great job and uh, really um, uh, put us on the fast track. Cool, cool. I really really appreciate you guys saying that. You know, if if people want to learn more about your venue. Um, they want to reach out, ask you some questions, maybe the the uh, secrets to multi generational business success, you know, and the, and also the future venue success that you're on the track for. Um, what's the best way to reach out to you guys? Probably by email. It's just hello at sparrowfieldestate dot com. Um, we've got a contact form on our website sparrowfieldestate dot com. Um, I feel like email is the best. Sometimes Instagram DMs, I get a little. Yeah. They couldn't get lost, you know. So yeah, email is probably the best. And I carry a phone with me all the time. I I, I use text as a email, as, yeah. as you know. <laughs> yep. It's yeah. hey, and it's a good it's a good way to go. It's right there. It's quick, and it it works. It works. Yeah, anytime someone says, "Oh, I emailed your dad," I'm like, "No, no, no. Here's his cell. Just shoot a text. Yeah. He's not going to get back to you on it." Email. Give me a text to check my email. Yeah. But, uh, there you go. Well, hey, by the time we reach, uh, we release this episode, I know the new website is going to be done. Yeah, yeah. We'll put some pressure on you, Chris Ann, right? Yeah. Uh, nothing you're not used to. And, um, I've, you know, I'm really excited for pe- people to check out what you guys are doing over there. So thanks so much for coming on. This has been great. Thanks, John. Thanks. <laughs>